The Zhao Juan, generally translated as Zhao traditional commentary of Zhao, is an ancient Chinese narrative history that is traditionally regarded as a commentary on the ancient Chinese chronicle Spring and Autumn Annals. It comprises 30 densely written chapters covering a period from 722 to 468 BC, and focuses mainly on political, diplomatic, and military affairs from that era. Unlike the other two surviving annals commentaries, the Gongyang and Guliang commentaries, the Zhao Juan does not simply explain the wording of the annals, but greatly expounds upon its historical background, and contains a large number of rich and lively accounts of spring and autumn period history and culture. The Zhao Juan is the source of more Chinese sayings and idioms than any other classical work, and its concise, flowing style came to be held as a paragon of elegant classical Chinese. Its tendency towards third-person narration and portraying characters through direct speech and action became hallmarks of Chinese narrative in general, and its style was imitated by historians, storytellers, and ancient style prose masters for over 2,000 years of subsequent Chinese history. Although the Zhao Juan has long been regarded as a masterpiece of grand historical narrative, its early textual history is largely unknown, and the nature of its original composition and authorship have been widely debated. The Zhao of the Zhao Juan's title was traditionally believed to refer to one Zhao Qiming, an obscure figure of the 5th century BC described as a blind disciple of Confucius, but there is little actual evidence to support this. Modern scholars now generally believe that the Zhao Juan was originally an independent work composed during the latter half of the 4th century BC, that was later rearranged as a commentary to the annals. History Tracing the early history of the Zhao Juan is complicated by the fact that there were originally two versions of it. One, known as the modern script version, which circulated during the early Han Dynasty, and another, known as the ancient script version, which was discovered in the Han imperial archives by scholar Lu Xin during the reign of Emperor I of Han. Like the other two surviving commentaries on the spring and autumn annals, the Gongyang and Guliang traditions, the Zhao Duan originally existed in an independent format with no direct references to the annals. In the 3rd century AD, scholar Du Yu intercalated it with the annals so that each annals entry was followed by the corresponding narrative from the Zhao Juan, which became the received format of the Zhao Juan that exists today. Authorship The earliest known mention of the Zhao Duan appears in Sima Qian's records of the Grand Historian, China's first dynastic history which was completed about 104 BC. The records refers to the Zhao Duan as Master Zuo's Spring and Autumn Annals and attributes it to a man named Zhao Qiming, traditionally assumed to be the Zhao Qiming who briefly appears in the Analects of Confucius when Confucius praises him for his moral judgment. Other than his brief mention in the Analects, nothing is concretely known of Zhao Qiming's life or identity nor of what connection he might have with the Zhao Juan. This traditional assumption that the titles Master Zhao refers to the Zhao Qiming of the Analects is not based on any specific evidence, and was challenged by scholars as early as the 8th century during the Tang Dynasty. Even if he is the Zhao, a referenced in the Zhao Juan's title, this attribution is questionable because the Zhao Juan describes events from the late spring and autumn period that the Zhao Qiming of the Analects could not have known. Alternatively, some scholars have suggested that the Zhao Juan was actually the product of one Wu Qi, a military leader who served in the state of Wei and who, according to the Han Fizi, was from a place called Zuoshi. Commentary status In the early 19th century, the Chinese scholar Lu Fenglu initiated a long, drawn-out controversy when he proposed, by emphasizing certain discrepancies between it and the annals, that the Zhao Juan was not originally a commentary on the annals, 
Liu's theory was taken much further by the noted scholar and reformer Kang Yuvai, who argued that Lu Xin did not really find the ancient script version of the Zhao Zhuan in the imperial archives, as historical records describe, but actually forged it as a commentary on the annals. Kang's theory was that Lu Xin, who with his father Lu Xiang, the imperial librarian, was one of the first to have access to the rare documents in the Han Dynasty's imperial archives, took the discourses of the states and forged it into a chronicle-like work to fit the format of the annals in an attempt to lend credibility to the policies of his master, the usurper Wang Mang. Kang's theory was supported by several subsequent Chinese scholars in the late 19th century but was contradicted by a large number of 20th century studies that examined it from many different perspectives. In the early 1930s, French sinologist Henri Maspero performed a detailed textual study of the issue, concluding the Han Dynasty forgery theory to be untenable. The Swedish sinologist Bernhard Kahlgren, based on a series of linguistic and philological analyses he carried out in the 1920s, concluded that the Zhao Zhuan is a genuine ancient text probably to be dated between 468 and 300 BC. Kang's theory of Lu Xin forging the Zhao Zhuan is now considered discredited, and modern scholars now generally believe that the Zhao Zhuan was originally an independent work, possibly a history of the state of Qi, composed during the latter half of the 4th century BC that was later rearranged as a commentary to the annals. Manuscripts The oldest surviving Zhao Zhuan manuscripts are six fragments that were discovered among the Dunhuang manuscripts in the early 20th century by the French sinologist Paul Pelliot and are now held at the Bibliothèque Nationale de France. Four of the fragments date to the Sixth Dynasty's period, while the other two date to the early Tang Dynasty. The oldest known complete Zhao Zhuan manuscript is the Ancient Manuscript Scroll preserved at the Kanazawa Bunko Museum in Yokohama, Japan. Contents the Zhao Zhuan recounts the major political, military, and social events of the spring and autumn period, and is famous for its dramatic power and realistic details. Speeches feature prominently in nearly all Zhao Zhuan stories. The narratives of the Zhao Zhuan are highly didactic in nature, and are presented in such a way that they teach and illustrate moral principles with the traditional Confucian notion of ritual propriety or ceremony being presented as the governing force of all actions, including war. Although moral lessons are strongly incorporated in the Zhao Zhuan, it is primarily a history, and presents a relentlessly realistic portrayal of the chaos and violence of the historical period it covers, including examples of innocent people being unjustly persecuted and killed. Unlike the histories of Herodotus or the history of the Peloponnesian War of Thucydides, with which it is roughly contemporary, the narrator in the Zhao, Duan always remains in the third-person perspective, and presents as a dispassionate recorder of facts. Battles on the day GC the Jin army encamped at Chengpu. The Jin commander Zhu Chen, who was acting as assistant to the leader of the lower army, prepared to oppose the troops of Chen and Kai. On the Chu side, Deccan, with the 600 men of the Ruoao family, was acting as commander of the Central Army. Today, mark my word, Jin will be wiped out, he said. Dao Yishan was acting as commander of the left wing of the Chu army, and Albo as commander of the right wing. Zhu Chen, having cloaked his horses in tiger skins, led the attack by striking directly at the troops of Chen and Kai. The men of Chen and Kai fled, and the right wing of the Chu army was thus routed. Hu Mao, the commander of the Jin upper army, hoisted two pennons and began to retreat. While Lu Anji, the commander of the Jin lower army, had his men drag brushwood over the ground to simulate the dust of a general rout, the Chu forces raced after in pursuit, whereupon Yu and Chen and Shi Chen, leading the Duke's own select troops of the Central Army, fell upon them from either side. Hu Mao and Hu Yan, leading the upper army, turned about and likewise attacked Dao Yishan from either side thereby routing the left wing of the Chu army. 
Thus the two army suffered a resounding defeat. Only Deccan, who had kept his troops back and had not attempted to pursue the enemy, as a result managed to escape defeat. Description of battle The Battle of Chengpu, Zhao Jun, 28th year of Dukeshi Several of the Zhao Jun's most famous sections are those dealing with critical historical battles, such as the Battle of Chengpu and the Battle of Bai. The Battle of Chengpu, the first of the Zhao Jun's great battles, took place in 632 BC at Chengpu in the state of Wei. On one side were the troops of the powerful state of Chu, from what was then far southern China, led by the Chu Prime Minister Cheng Deccan. Chu suffered a disastrous defeat in the battle itself, and it resulted in Chong'e being named hegemon of the various states. The narrative of the Battle of Chengpu is typical of Zhao Juan battle narratives in that the description of the battle itself is relatively brief, most of the narrative being focused on battle preparations, omens and prognostications regarding its outcome, the division of the spoils, and the shifts and defections of the various allied states involved in the conflict. This, official, and, restrained, style, which became typical of Chinese historical writing, is largely due to the ancient Chinese belief that ritual propriety and strategic preparation were more important than individual valor or bravery in determining the outcome of battles. Succession crises Several of the most notable passages in the Zhao Juan describe succession crises which seem to have been fairly common in China during the spring and autumn period. These crises often involve the tangled affections of the various rulers, and are described in a dramatic and vivid manner that gives insight into the life of the aristocratic elite in the China of the mid-first millennium BC. The best known of these stories is that of Duke Zhuang of Zheng, who ruled the state of Zheng from 743 to 701 BC. Duke Zhuang was born, in a manner that startled his mother, which caused her to later seek to persuade her husband to name Duke Zhuang's younger brother as the heir apparent instead of him. The story ends with eventual reconciliation between mother and son, exemplifying the traditional Chinese virtues of both ritual propriety and filial piety, which has made it consistently popular with readers over the centuries. Moral verdicts, the gentleman remarks, this alliance accorded with good faith. In this campaign, the ruler of Jin, Chong'e, was able to attack through the power of virtue, moral postface after Chong'e, Duke of Jin's ultimate victory and foundation of alliance, the Battle of Chengpu, Zhao Jun, 28th year of Duke Xi. A number of Zhao Jun anecdotes end with brief moral comments or verdicts that are attributed to either Confucius or an unnamed Chong'e. These, moral of the story, postfaces, which were added later by Confucian scholars, are directed toward those currently in power, reminding him of the historical precedents and inevitable consequences of their own actions. They speak with the voices of previous ministers, advisors, old men, and other anonymous figures to remind rulers of historical and moral lessons and suggest that ruler who heeds their advice will succeed, while those who do not will fail. Influence The Zhao Juan has been recognized as a masterpiece of early Chinese prose and grand historical narrative for many centuries, and has had an immense influence on Chinese literature and historiography for nearly 2,000 years. The 400-year period it covers, now known as the spring and autumn period after the spring and autumn annals, is a highly significant period in Chinese history, and saw a number of developments in governmental complexity and specialization that preceded China's imperial unification in 221 BC by the first. Emperor of Qin. The latter years of this period also saw the appearance of Confucius, who later became the preeminent figure in Chinese cultural history. The Zhao Juan is one of the only surviving written sources for the history of the spring and autumn period, and is extremely valuable as a rich source of information on the society that Confucius and his disciples lived in and from which the Confucian 
school of thought developed. It was canonized as one of the Chinese classics in the first century AD, and until modern times was one of the cornerstones of traditional education for men in China and the other lands of the Sinosphere such as Japan and Korea. Translations. Leg. James. The Chun T.S.E.W. with the T.S.O. Chuan. The Chinese Classics V. London. Trubner. Part 1. Part 2. Revised Edition. London. Oxford University Press. Cuvre. Seraphin. Chiruen C.O.A.T.S.O. Chuan. La Chronique de la Principauté de Lu. Chun Q. and Zhao Juan. Chronicle of the State of Lu. Ho Qian Fu, Takuch Teruo, Shunju Sashidan, Chung Qiu Zuo Shi Juan, Zhen Sha Ku Kanban Taike, Fully Interpreted Chinese Literature Series, 4 to 6, Tokyo, Shuisha, Watson, Burton, The TSO Xuan, Selections from China's Oldest Narrative History, New York, Columbia University Press, Reprinted. Hu, Zhui, Chen, Ke Hiong, Zhao Juan, Chang Sha, Hunan Renman Chubanshi.